For Londoners, Oxford Street is one you either love or hate or outright avoid on a Saturday afternoon. But why is it called Oxford Street? And why is it so long and wide? And how and when did it come to be associated with public executions? Well, let's go back to the beginning, almost 2,000 years ago, in fact. Because Oxford Street is actually a Roman road. Back in the 1st century AD, it formed part of the road known as Via Trinobantina. This ancient trackway linked Camulogunum, aka Colchester, in the east, to Caliva Atrobatum, near Silchester in Hampshire, to the west. It intersected Watling Street, around the point where Marble Arch is today. Watling Street is one of the most famous Roman roads in Britain, spanning from Kent to Shropshire. Edgware Road, beginning just across the road from Marble Arch, forms part of the modern-day equivalent of Watling Street. This becomes apparent when you search on Google Maps for directions from Edgware Road to, well, Edgware, a town situated eight miles away, in a straight line. Fast forward to the year 1196. This is the year the first recorded hanging took place at the Tyburn Gallows, specifically of populist leader William Fitz Osbert, aka William Longbeard. The exact location is presumed to be around where Marble Arch stands today. To reach here, the prisoners were transported in an open cart from Newgate to prison, where the Old Bailey stands in its place today, and straight down Oxford Street, or as it was known at the time, Tyburn Road. During this journey, the prisoners would be met with jeers from onlookers who had to be restrained by groups of officers on horseback. The gallows went through various different designs, the most notorious being arguably the triple tree, which was a structure made of three beams forming a triangle, each supported by a post. Each beam could hold eight prisoners, meaning 24 at a time could be hanged. Friends and relatives would often tug at the feet of the condemned in order to end their suffering more quickly. Hangings at the Tyburn Gallows continued for centuries, up until 1783. This was the point at which it was decided that its presence was holding back the surrounding area from attracting the upper classes, so executions were moved in-house at Newgate Prison itself. The road had already changed its name to Oxford Street by this point. Tyburn Road was the given name for centuries, so-called as the River Tyburn crosses it, although these days it does so underground. In fact, Marylebone Lane, South Malton Lane and other streets defy the grid system of Mayfair and Marylebone and instead follow the course of the Tyburn. The timeline as to when this change of name took place is aided by none other than Daniel Defoe. In his book, A Tour Through the Whole Island of Great Britain, written in the 1720s, he states the following while listing new public buildings in London, quote, A new bear garden called Figs Theatre, being a stage for the gladiators or prize fighters, and is built on the Tyburn Road. N.B. The gentleman of the science, taking offence at its being called Tyburn Road, though it really is so, will have it called the Oxford Road. This public edifice is fully finished and in use. So the name changed from Tyburn Road, first to Oxford Road, and then to Oxford Street, starting in the eastern section north of Soho, and eventually spreading west, according to cartographer Jean Rock's 1746 map of London, which shows the name split between the two. Also of note, on that same map from 1746 is Great Swallow Street, which was the predecessor to Regent Street. The name Oxford Street is believed to derive from the Earls of Oxford, who purchased land in the area. By the late 19th century, development spread west. The continuation of Oxford Street to the west today is first Bayswater Road, then Notting Hill Gate, then Holland Park Avenue, then Shepherd's Bush, all along a virtually straight section of road which hints at the street's origins in Roman times. West of Shepherd's Bush is Uxbridge Road, which ultimately leads to, you guessed it, Uxbridge, 
which is a town on the very western fringe of London, and a staging post on the old stagecoach route to Oxford. Although these days, to get to Oxford from London by road, you would likely take the West Way, the western continuation of Marylebone Road. But going back to the 18th century, this was a time in which Oxford Street became increasingly commercial and less residential. One of its lost buildings is the Pantheon, which opened in 1772. This was a set of assembly rooms where the Georgian High Society would congregate for social events. The building featured a central dome reminiscent of its namesake, the Pantheon in Rome. The building would later be repurposed first as an opera house, and later as a theatre. Eventually, it was demolished in the 1930s, and the site was acquired by Marks and Spencer, who still own the premises to this very day, on the south side, just east of Oxford Circus. In 1864, a drapery shop was opened on Oxford Street by a man named John Lewis. This went on to become one of the biggest brands of department stores in the UK, in 1906, a man named Harry Gordon Selfridge arrived in London from Chicago. A few years later, John Lewis had a rival department store on the very same street, namely Selfridge's. This became the location for the first ever public demonstration of the television in 1925. The idea was conceived in Hastings on the south coast, where its inventor, John Logie Baird, had spent time recovering from an illness. Sadly, Oxford Street was hit by the Luftwaffe during the Second World War. Both Selfridges and John Lewis were hit, but the latter had it worse and had to be demolished. Repairs were made to Selfridges and it escaped demolition. Its storefront has Edwardian foundations with additions up to the 1920s, and is one of the architectural highlights of the streets today, whilst the rest of the street looks, well, distinctly modern. This also explains why Regent Street is almost certainly the better looking of the two streets, as its shops are largely late 19th and early 20th century rebuildings of the Regency era originals. From the mid 20th century to the present day, Oxford Street has grown from strength to strength. Well, mostly, as there have been some recent casualties, including the closure of the street's branches of two other department stores, namely Debenhams and House of Fraser. Nevertheless, it can still be said that what started out as a grim last ride for condemned prisoners on the way to the gallows is now Europe's busiest shopping street. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe, and you can also check out my flagship channel, 4K Explorer, where all the video footage featured here originated. Link in the description below. Have a great day.